Thank you so much for being with us today. I know it's a privilege to have you in our booth. Um, let's get started by, we, we hear a lot about the operational successes of the Coast Guard, but we don't hear a lot about mission support. So can you start with telling us about some of the great uh, mission support successes that uh, have been accomplished in the last year? All right, I really like that question because operational success is mission support success. All right, there's nothing that happens on the water or in the air that it's not enabled by our mission support professionals. And so every time we take down a drug runner, we save a life, that's mission support in action. And if you think about some recent amazing operations of the Coast Guard, the Healy just uh, circumnavigated North America. That took an amazing amount of effort by our mission support experts to support that transit, to get cycle converter cards to that ship in the remotest parts of the Arctic so that they could make the decision to go into the ice. If you think about the Polar Star, just pushed further south than any breaker in the history of the world, our mission support team was supporting that ship in the reaches of Antarctica when they had servers go down. So every operational success is a mission support success. You think about uh, the Cutter Decisive, Decisive of right now down in the Caribbean, uh, saving lives as migrants take to the water uh, decisive was just in the Coast Guard Yard for emergency repairs. That was work that only the Coast Guard Yard could do on the time schedule that we needed. That's mission success and that's mission support success. And, and I, could go, I could go on and on. There's a ton of other things that uh, our mission support uh, professionals are doing every day. You know, we have our medical teams on the southwest border. We have teams assisting with allies uh, welcome. Those are all mission uh, support professionals doing that. Um, and, and then uh, you know, just on the personnel side, just yesterday the Commandant announced the uh, Ready Workforce 30 initiative. Um, our mission support professionals worked on that initiative for, for years, Modern Ready Learning, which is uh, modernizing how we train, delivering training to our operators when they need it, exactly where they are, and tailored to the specific missions. So a lot of great mission support success, but I just cannot overstate that any operational success is a mission support success. Well, thank you. Um, and of course, uh, acquisition and those uh, operational um, assets play a very uh, large role in that mission success as well. So can you update us on what's going on in the area of acquisitions right now? Yeah, so it's uh, an exciting time to be in the Coast Guard when it comes to acquisitions. I, I think everyone's heard, right, the largest recapitalization of our fleet uh, since World War II. And I, I would, you know, certainly in dollar value, it's the largest in, in the history of our service. You know, we started this recapitalization with the national security cutters. We just launched NSC number 10, the Calhoun, just last week. We'll finish up that program of record in the next couple of years here. But that's brought game-changing capability, uh, particularly to, uh, you know, our counter-drug um, missions in the East Pack and West Pack. Um, but it's also brought game-changing capability to the nation. Uh, and you will see the nation push those NSCs into places like the South China Sea and into in, uh, in into PACOM areas, and even up in the Bering Sea, where we are tangling it up right, routinely um, with Russians and Chinese, and so that, that's been game-changing for our nation. And then you look at the federal uh, fast response cutters, right, we just launched uh, number 45 or 48 out of the program of record of 65. Congress just pushed some more money into our budget to continue that program. Those are absolutely game-changers. I can tell you as the 8th District Commander, when I got an FRC down on the uh, maritime boundary line with Mexico, uh, we were catching those illegal fishermen at rates that we never had before. Uh, and, and those FRCs are being pushed further and further uh, from shore than we've before. So absolute game changing there. I'm really excited in the next month or so, well, a couple months or so, we will see OPC number one floating, painted white and floating. I've had a chance to climb around Argus and that is one heck of a ship. You know, it's about 10 feet shorter than our 378 class that we just retired, but it's 11 feet more beam, and it's much more displacement. That ship is going to be a game changer in places like uh, in both the uh, Atlantic and, and Pacific Arctic, for example, um, but also is going to be a global deployer. So we're excited about that. Um, you know, we have an announcement coming up soon, probably next two or three months on, on stage two for that project, and uh, we're just really excited to keep OPCs coming at the program a record of 25 hulls. We will also be announcing the WCC, the Waterway Commerce Cutter uh, contract here shortly. Uh, those will replace cutters that uh, are older than me, which actually would be a sad day when that happens. But uh, 
you know, we have a critical mission on the rivers, and uh, those cutters enable really trillions of dollars of commerce, and um, we're excited to see the first WCC is rolling off the production line in a few years here. And a really tremendous thing about that is that for the first time we'll be able to accommodate mixed gender crews on those vessels. Um, and I cannot wait to see our first female EPO or OIC of, of one of our river tenders. So, so that's coming, and I know the next commandant will hold me to that. So um, a lot of exciting stuff on the aviation side as well. You know, we're updating the mission packages and the avionics, moving to the uh, C-130Js. We're moving the 65s from Deltas to Echoes. We're missionizing the C-27s. You know, we're increasing the uh, size of our H-60 fleet, um, and we will be s uh, flying 65s for years to come, um, but eventually we're going to be all 60s. Uh, so just a lot going on in the acquisition world. Um, and also in the acquisition front, uh, can you tell me about the new initiative that's out there to help uh, for the smaller procurements? Uh, we're trying to modernize the Coast Guard contracting and procurement, uh, calling it the Buy Better Revolution. Yeah, I, yeah. so um, really more focused on procurement than on acquisition, but looking at all of our contracting, uh, you know, the good news for the Coast Guard is our budgets have been good. And you know, between the 22, 23 budget and the infrastructure bill, there's a billion dollars for Coast Guard shore infrastructure. A lot of that will go to build home ports for those new cutters. Um, but we're challenged in our capacity to actually execute that money, both in terms of civil engineering capacity, but also contracting capacity. So we, you know, we had a study done. We realized that we are not contracting as efficiently as we could. Um, for example, we have the highest number of contracting actions per contracting officer of any of our peer agencies, but with the lowest dollar value per action. So that's not a good place to be. So uh, we got a team looking at that. We're going to increase the, uh, the efficiency of our contractor. We're doing it for a number of reasons. One, I need to provide better customer service to my customers within the Coast Guard. Two, we need to be more effective and make our money go further. And three, that workforce is stressed. Our contracting workforce is stressed, and we need to improve our processes for them. So thanks for asking. That's an important initiative, and I'm really excited to see the dividends. Well, you said, of course, that mission support is operational success. So what do you see as the biggest needs coming out of the operational community in the future? How can the industry best support an always changing Coast Guard? Yeah, so what I think the biggest challenge in the future is the refresh time on all of our C5I systems, right? We, before, before we, given our acquisition regulations, when you buy C5I, it is by definition antiquated by the time you put it on board. We need to figure out how to get inside the acquisition cycle, whether that means we gotta buy C5I as, as a service, um, where the industry will just refresh it at a re regular cycle, and we can buy it once under contract, I don't know what the answer is, but the refresh cycle on C5I is going to eat our lunch. For the first time, when we bring our national security cutters in for their midlife uh, maintenance, for the first time in our services history, we will be spending more money and time on C5I refresh on those ships than we will on hull mechanical and electrical. Uh, so we got to do it differently. So I'm standing by for those solutions. <laughs> So you have anything else you want to talk about? Or are you ready to get questions from the audience? Uh, well, yeah, we'll see what they want to talk about. All right. Hey. Good afternoon, Admiral. Thanks for coming out here today. I um, recently retired uh, Coast Guard 06, uh, September. Uh, aviators, so don't hold that against me. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've recently been uh, brought on board with General Dynamics. And um, one of the challenges I'm having, even though I know a lot of people at Coast Guard headquarters, is the engagement with industry or lack thereof. It's almost as if they're afraid, if you will, to engage with industry. Um, and one of the questions I have is, what, I, what can I do differently to make that process more transparent or seamless? And then the other questions I had, and I hate to bother you with this because I I can't get an appointment with requirements to ask them about the future of Rescue 21's next generation, the uh, migration of iCloud, and then finally Rescue 21 in Alaska. I was a commanding officer at the air station in Kodiak, Alaska, 2015 to 2018, and I can tell you Rescue 21 was pretty limited sometimes. I know you know that, sir. But I'm just curious what the future holds for those particular programs and what can I do better to engage with the Coast Guard? 
Yeah, well, first, thanks for your service and congratulations on your retirement. Um, I'm not far behind you. You know, so you know it's difficult to have those engagements with industry, particularly if on a one-on-one -on -one basis, right? So we look to, toward uh, industry days or reverse industry days where we bring you in and tell you what our challenges are uh, so that you can then tell us what your solutions are. Rescue 21 in Alaska is a challenge. The future of Rescue 21 is not Rescue 21 version 2.0. It's not terrestrial-based towers. We, we know that, and we do have a requirements team working on uh, future, you know, but we have to get those requirements to a certain stage through our department before we can then, you know, put out an RFP. So it is, I think, intentionally opaque. Uh, the Congress did that to us uh, for one, you know, to make sure that it's fair and open competition. Um, but we do look to have some reverse industry days so we can talk to you about what our challenges are moving forward, uh, and you can help us develop some solutions. Other questions? Raise your hand. Anyone? All right, this is an easy group. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, thank you all.